<laughs> There's real man. <laughs> You know, real man. Uh, who would have who would have come up with a, a vomit as a catchphrase, huh? Nobody except real man. Essentially, that's vomiting, right? <laughs> I'm in a goofy mood, man. I am so lazy today. I can hardly do anything. And it's a glorious day outside, and yet I'm in here... Uh, doing this, a recording. Anyway, I'll get out there in a little bit. Greetings, fellow citizens. This is Citizen Kong, and welcome to another Fez Night. Tonight's Fez Night shall be called Fez Night. Now, even Fezier. Try and put a little energy in there. Um,. Hopefully this won't won't be too choppy. I'm I'm looking at I'm using my i uh, iMovie, and uh, and my webcam and recording directly onto iMovie, which has caused some problems in the past. But I've closed out every application, and so uh, that should help. And uh, what else is going on? Yes, yeah, so I'm drinking tea, Irish breakfast, with uh, sugar and a little bit of soy milk. Sorry I haven't answered the comments from last week. You know what? I'm going to risk it. I'm going to open an application and go back and look at the... Anyway, I hope you all, all you guys are having a, a great week. And, uh, yeah, welcome to Fez Night. Let me put my readers on here. Welcome to Fez Night, my weekly vlog where I talk about myself and the things that are happening on my corner of YouTube talk about a little bit about the news, offer some political opinion, and let's see, okay, we'll go to YouTube. After all, Fez Night is a YouTube show, so I think it's, I think it's okay for me to talk about YouTube, and, um, and I, think, uh, I think it's my right to talk about, to talk about people, why not? <laughs> And if I say it on Fez Night, it's not like I'm talking behind their backs, am I? Oh, let's see. Yeah, some of you uh, like the drama, some of you don't, I know. Uh, let's see. Where was I? Yeah, I did a few extra videos this week. I did a right-wing conservative Sarah Palin. And uh, I, got, I did a gift from Nigel Cromwell. I did a kiff from Pops. And I did the... I did the, uh, the contest, and uh, more on that later. And uh, did all right on views for last Fez. Bit of Fez, I got uh, 274. Hey, Gino, I want to say hi to Gino. Gino the Hitman. He says, man, seeing you in a long sleeve shirt makes me want to turn up the air conditioner to the ice cold mode. It's about 100 degrees here. Very good Fez, old chap, and belated birthday. I turned the big 51 this year, and all my bones crack and shift when I get up on the couch. Hope this B-Day sp spreads good luck to you, your pal Gino. Yeah, remember last week I talked about how, uh, how uh, I still feel young in my head? Ooh, there it skipped a little bit. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't be reading the comments. <laughs> Screw it. So, um, yeah, so uh, some, some friends that I worked with, worked with at, um, uh, at my other job, the job that Timmy keeps, he gets it wrong. He keeps making fun of, but he gets it wrong. And, uh, um, yeah, I needed to procure something. So I called him and I got invited over. He said, Oh no, we're just, we're just chilling out. And I was invited over there having a, uh, a barbecue. And, uh, most everybody there is, is vegan. And uh, so I got to have a, some kind of faux chicken uh, uh, patty on a bun, and there were uh, tofu hot dogs. And I've had tofu hot dogs before, they're all right, but I have to say that faux chicken patty was actually, actually really good. And so we were drinking some beers and stuff, and then at some point, somebody else showed up, and out, out came the, uh, the, um, the, the, the marijuana. 
So I'm I'm trying to yeah you know I may be older than everybody here but I'm still cool you know. So somebody started rolling a doobie and then uh, and then he says to me he goes uh, he goes uh, do you do bongs and I'm like oh yeah yeah sure I do bongs you know because man that was a big thing when I was a when a teenager you know was uh, doing bongs and your ability to do big bongs you know and uh, and I I could hold my own I was I actually had pretty good lung capacity back then. So I say, yeah, sure. And uh, so they break out this big glass bong. And that's the thing now that's different. I mean, we used to have all kinds of different pipes, glass pipes, clay pipes, um, metal pipes. I prefer metal pipe, my brass pipe, because, um, you know, you drop it. It's very durable. Um, you know, it's very easy to maintain. And uh, But mainly, I drop things. And so you'd be out somewhere enjoying yourself and then drop your glass pipe, you know, it kind of suck. So I break out this big glass bong, and um, there's some young gal there that um, it was pretty cool, you know. She's talking to me, and uh, so, so anyway, so he hands me this bong. And first of all, I have to say, well, don't pack it too big. <laughs> I can't do big ones anymore, which I remember when I was their age, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, you know, he's over the hill. And then, but the thing that really clinched it was, is right before I, I used the bong, I asked him if there was a clear hole. And, um, and I forget that nobody makes bongs with clear holes anymore. They always, like, you move the socket when you're finished at the tail end. And, uh, and that gal says, uh, yeah, that's what, my, that's what my dad always asks. <laughs> and I was like, oh, man. Uh, so after I took the hit, which is which is uh, normal for me in social situations, if I if I get high, I start feeling uncomfortable, especially among people that I'm not really really super familiar with, and uh, I got very self conscious being the oldest person there, so I left. But uh, but later, I I thought like later I said I needed to have a comeback, but I couldn't. I didn't have a comeback. I was like. Hey. <laughs> Now it is later. You always think of a comeback. I should have said, your father, I'm old enough to be your grandfather. <laughs> uh, yeah, not so good. But at least if I would have said that, that would have been something. Oh, all right. So let's see. Um, yeah, hopefully it's not skipping now. But uh, let's see. Giraffe Pooh says, you look great. I'm glad you're drinking tea and relaxing. I've just been busy doing mom stuff. I'm so glad you're still around doing your thing. YouTube wouldn't be the same without you. Yeah, I would have to say Barbarelli, haven't seen her on, on video for quite a while, and she looks great. She actually looks really good. That woman is bonkers. She says she's not going to talk about politics anymore. One of the things I, I was like, oh, man, she got this big thing about Glenn Beck, thought he was, like, amazing, was telling people to read his book and everything. I was just like, oh, come on, Barb. Uh, Guy LaFrog says, the jaunty angle of the fez is important, isn't it? The blue fez goes well with the tar Target t-shirt. Yeah, it's... um. Yeah, Target or the, the Roundel. Um, yeah. Actually, I think, uh, I think I answered most of these comments last week. Um, am I sure the bit of Fez? Yes, it was one week ago. All right, I answered, I answered most of these comments, so that's not necessary. So let's see, let's see, am I still freezing up here? A little bit? Copy? I don't know, maybe I should stop now and play it back. <laughs> I like to be able to keep my browser open so I can uh, read stuff off here. All right, I'll close out that browser. In case it keeps causing problems. All right, so what else? All right, well, speaking speaking of which, I need to talk about uh, not speaking of which, but uh, I was reading through the comments and there was Angie. Angie left a comment because I was talking about the rock video, the the rock contest, uh, where um, uh, and like I said, I only did it because. Um, uh, I thought it would take the Mick out of out of Timmy a little bit uh, to be his replacement. Uh, why Z Moulton featured Timmy in every one of the videos, I don't know. 
<laughs> but if he's going to find a replacement, I thought it'd be funny if it were me. And I didn't really want to run against a friend. And I said, if it was, if it was, uh, if she had entered first, I wouldn't have entered. Okay. And, um, and so, uh, Z posted another video during, during the week. And I thought, oh, okay, it was an announcement for the winner because I felt this is kind of dragged on. And it would be vote a thumbs down on the video, which, look, I don't mean to gripe, but I'm gonna. I mean a little bit. Um, as far as that thumbs up, thumbs down, in a, weird, in a weird way, it was only two contestants. Otherwise, he would have had to pick another way to, uh, to count votes. Um, but a lot of people like Z, and I think initially, just watching the video, they're going to give it a thumbs up, which will automatically be a vote for An Angie. It's funny how Tom Kennedy saw it as the opposite. He's, he made it sound like people will automatically thumb the video down as soon as they start watching it. And that, in that way that I'll get unfair votes. Well, I, I think that was the opposite of that, um, if you really think about it. So anyway, Z posted a video, and I thought it was going to be announcing the winner. But more or less, it was a video talking about the contest. And um, if, you go to, if you go to the video where the contest is going on and the voting is going on, you can see Pops as Pop Art Productions. You can also see him there as Tommy Two Guns just going on a tirade. A tirade about how awful I am and how I shouldn't, you know... I have no talent, I'm not interesting, and and la la la, you know. So I went back over there and told him to shut up, fatty. <laughs> yeah, real clever comeback, huh? But, uh, but geez, man, if you have such a problem with it, why didn't you enter the contest, you know? You know, I mean, instead he just sits on the sideline going boo-hoo-hoo, and, uh, and I forget, he comes up with some lame excuse of why, he's, why he didn't enter. And, uh, yeah, because you know you'd lose. <laughs> yeah, that's why. So, um, so oh, and one of the things he was accusing me of was cheating. Now, I don't, I don't know how I myself am going to cheat, you know, really. Um... I somehow hack into YouTube and control the votes or something. I don't know, you know. Open up a thousand sock accounts. Well, actually, probably a hundred sock accounts, 50 sock accounts, and I'll vote for myself. I don't know. But like somebody said on there, a vote is a vote, okay? He could have had it by views. Somebody could be clicking the views or whatever. I just look at it, if anybody's putting in the effort, that much effort, they want to win. I mean, they're actually putting work into it. Whereas me, I'd rather just have my friends vote for me, okay? And, uh, but I pretty much didn't pay attention to what Pops was saying. But then when Z made this video, he mentioned it. He said that, and I don't remember, I guess he even said that some say that Angie is cheating, you know, and uh, which, which I don't, I don't see it, you know. And, um, and then I was cheating. And then Z says, Citizen Kong, are you cheating? And look, I understand, okay? You're making a video to promote the contest and to create some drama, create some controversy or, you know, fan the flames a little bit. But giving voice to Pops' false accusations, you know, absolutely has no proof, you know? And I mean, I, I got real, I got, I got angry. I mean, I'm watching that late at night, and I'm thinking, oh, brother. It was about 11.30. I was tired. I said, screw this. I don't want to be part of this contest. You know? I, I started, like, saying, I, I, I'm dropping out. I'm dropping out because if people are going to think that I'm cheating, I just want to let them know I don't really care. Okay? You know, I don't care about this contest that much that I'm going to go through the whole thing about cheating. And... I mean, it just goes against, goes against my great, you know, the whole thing. Um, you know, to be honest, yeah, I've never gone my whole life without cheating. I've, I've copied, uh, I've asked a guy in math class, you know, do you have the answer for this? <laughs> yeah, I've done that. But I never got through school solely on cheating, okay? 
And I not a YouTube contest. It's just Pops is just being whiny and vindictive, you know? And uh, so Z sent me a PM and he explained it would cause him a lot of hassle because he's already got something edited and it would cause him a problem to re-edit. And uh, so so I, I cooled off and I changed my mind. You know, I'm still in the contest, all right? Um, but I figured I had to do something to get back at Pops. Hence, the Win Pops' Dildo Contest. Now, people are saying, like, where the hell did you get that dildo? All right? And, okay, Fez Knight's about being truthful, okay? I have said something in the past, but I try made-up stuff. But usually, if I'm going to do made-up stuff, I won't do it on Fez Knight. I did make, did make that exception when I talked about my, the, um, the problem I had with my, my testicles being unusually large. <laughs> and boy, people ran with that. And they thought they were really hurting my feelings. I was just laughing. <laughs> Pop still uses that as an insult. Oh, what was it? There was another thing I was going to say. Oh, never mind. Oh, yeah, yeah. I thought of something else, but later. So, um, yeah, the story behind, behind that, that phallus is, um, is years ago at the job that I worked for for almost 25 years. Um, There's a guy that worked there, and I know that, that we liked each other, but we would fight a lot. And uh, he was a right, right-wing right kind of guy. And I, I made the mistake of talking about politics there. But I didn't even talk to him about it. Some guy, other guy that worked there when, when this guy was hired said, oh, yeah, Dave's a liberal. So that started it right away, you know. And, uh, and but, but he, he helped me uh, since I got laid off, giving me a couple of uh, a job, jo you know, job heads up on some job stuff. And so I, you know, I know that, that, uh, that he misses me there. He's told me that. He really, really hates the guy that took my place. So, so I'm really cool with him. But at the time, he thought it'd be really funny. You know how you have the secret Santa at work? You know, it was around Christmas time. He gave me that as a Christmas gift. And he thought it was funny. And at the time, the gal I was dating would be way too much of a prude for, for, to, to use something like that. And besides, <laughs> the thing is huge. And look, I have nothing to be embarrassed about, but I'm not going to compete with that. You know, and it's it's so like, it's so typically male, you know, to boast about, you know, the side, yeah, how well endowed you are. So I'll be typically male. I've I've been complimented. I've been, uh, you know, I've had women say they were pleasantly surprised because I'm not a big a big person. I'm not, I'm not tall in stature. And so essentially they make the assumption that, um, you know, that, uh, that's in proportion to your actual size, but, but actually it's disport disproportionate. It's sort of like my disproportionately large head, you know, to my small framed body. Oh, besides the way, there's somebody made a comment that last time I showed, well, I'm not going to show you, but I had a little bit of a muffin top. I don't have one now. <laughs> This new job is like causing me to lose weight, but um, but anyway, yeah, I have a, a unusually large head for my small body, as as far as the other thing goes. <laughs> but I'm not going to compete with that. Oh, and my large head is not from its cranial capacity. It's not like like some people, an excess amount of fat <laughs> that makes a head grow large here. Oh, yeah, I crack myself up. Look, man, if, if you're my friend and you're overweight, and I never started out with that, you know. I mean, he started the personal attacks on my appearance. He started it. Yeah. So, anyway, I'm sorry. I am very childish. I can be. Like I said, up here I'm still like 18 or 19, sometimes 16. Um, so that's it. I'm still in the contest. And apparently Z's going to make the announcement on the next rot, which rot happens like once a month or something like that. So, uh, and as it stands now, I'm ahead, but I'm, I am, I am sure that, that, um, uh, my haters have reserved or are right at this moment making sock accounts and waiting for that last day and, and to vote me down. And that's fine. I really, really don't care now. Okay. 
just let it roll. All right. So, um, yeah, the other thing about my other fake video. All right. Oh, yeah, besides that phallus, I've had for over 10 years. I just can't bear the thought of throwing it out. The thing's expensive, you know. It could be useful to somebody, but I have absolutely no use for it. And I thought it'd be really funny. Because uh, Pops did make a video once that utilized the, a, a dildo, where he was, uh, uh, I mean, he ha you know, he has one too, you know, except it's not still in the package. <laughs> In fact, it looked kind of like, looked kind of like it'd been used a little bit. Uh, didn't look very clean. Um, yeah, it was used in it was a switchblade dildo when he was playing uh, Killer Queen Carol in in one of the uh, the videos a long time ago. Um, yeah, Pops is wearing a dress. Um, yeah, so. The other thing is, uh, the thing about Jeff sending out Bibles, no, he, he didn't actually send out a Bible. But apparently it upset him so much that he used one of his puppet characters to say something very distasteful about my mother. And, um, and apparently he thinks I had it coming because of that Bible thing. And I really don't see, I'm sorry, I'm sorry that that video was so hurtful to you. I did not see it as that. I thought it was just a humor, humorous thing on your anti-Christian stance. Um, you know, I thought it would be funny. Plus, you've been taking plenty of pokes at me in Timmy's uh, comment section, you know, about me wearing makeup and a, you know, and a beauty mark and, and other things. And you're, you've made plenty of videos featuring, you know, a Citizen Kong puppet. And I haven't really directly addressed, I haven't directly addressed you very much. Well, except on Fez Night, talking about your David Duke stance. But, um, so. All right, everybody, you know, Pop, uh, Pops. But Jeff didn't send me a Bible, okay? And he's still trying to get the network of evil, trying to bring it back to what it once was. So with people like Wobblehead and Real Man, um, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> no offense to Wobblehead and Real Man. It's just not the same, okay? You guys don't make those kind of videos, you know? Not that I ever did, you know? Except for uh, uh, probably Kong Escapes is the only, is only actually my attempt at filmmaking. Oh, by the way, a great video in what would have been you know, equal to anything in the, the high point, the, the heyday, the real period of the Network of Evil, was uh, Monk's uh, and Stan's video about Gra Grandma Takes a Trip or something like that. I'm sorry, I've got the title wrong. But it's featured on my channel. It'll be featured for the next couple of days or so. And uh, the reason why I like it so much is, is the Citizen Kong puppet makes an appearance near the end. And uh, I always get a kick out of that. Oh, and I want to mention Barfly Brooks' video. Really, really great job on a cooking video. I was very, 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 very impressed. Plus, the recipe was awesome. Now, first thing is like, oh, chicken livers. You know, I'm not going to like, that's not on my list of things that I would love to eat. But those looked amazing. I would totally eat those. Um, and it's a weird name. I want to say it's Raku. I'm sorry, I can't remember what it was called. But it's uh, uh, chicken livers wrapped in bacon and then, I guess, broiled. It's like a really, really cool hors d'oeuvre, really, or appetizer. And it uh, looked awesome. And I, wanna, I forgot to mention Frank of the Mountain, a, a uh, very cool uh, uh, person on YouTube, very, very talented. I've mentioned him before as far as his musical talent. And um, uh, I wanted to mention him as a, as a good supporter in the war on pops. <laughs> <laughs> a great supporter. Uh, yeah, there's there's just some there's just some key people. It, Pops has just de developed such it's just an animosity that will never go away. And somebody said, "Well, you guys have been fighting so long that you forgot what started it." No, I haven't forgotten. And neither is Pops, but we both have different versions of the story. <coughs> Excuse me. 
You know, I've been watching a lot of interesting movies, and I'm trying to try to remember them off the top of my head. But on Netflix, um, a streaming, I watched a movie called Trust. It was a very low budget movie, but it was, it was, uh, it was this, this redheaded young redhead in there that's just gorgeous. It was a very interesting video about a, a movie about dysfunction and uh, trust and love. It starts out this this girl, um, high school girl, who's just like spoiled, really pretty, you know, got nothing going on as far as, you know, not smart or educated or anything. Um, gets gets pregnant from the high school jock, the high, high school football star, who's, you know, pushing for a college scholarship, thinks he's going to get it. And uh, basically, he's just, you know, he just says, screw it, that's your problem. You know, she thought, oh, he kind of thought he cared about me. You know, and then she, she, uh, she gets kicked out of her house because of that. She gets in a fight with her father, and I'll just give this part away because it's an important part. It happens in the beginning. Um... Well, something else happens, pretty bad, and then she gets kicked out of the house. So she's basically on the street, and she meets up with this other guy that that has like this really really awful dad. He's older, and the guy can't hold down a job. He has real anger anger issues, but they end up getting together. It was a very interesting movie called Trust. Mm, I finally watched Up. That was good. Um, and. Uh, then I've been watching some really bad... I watched The Bloody Judge with Christopher Lee. Like I said before, I like those 60s horror movies because they're kind of like risque, you know, but in kind of a cool retro kind of way, you know, you know where they, they show some TNA, but it's in a really... The Bloody Judge was also some sort of like sadomasochist porn flick. <laughs> I mean, any of the nudity was a woman on the rack or being whipped or something. <laughs> it was just like... Yeah, that doesn't, yeah, that, I don't find that appealing, actually. Um, oh, I watched a great foreign film. It's French. And I think it was titled, How Much Do You Love Me? If you're really interested, send me a PM and I'll give you the, or write in the comment section, I'll give you the real title. And of course, it's translated. But this was a really interesting movie about this guy Who's who's he's set up fairly well, and um, but he's kind of dweebish, and uh, it's in France, and uh, he hires this prostitute who happens to be Italian to come live with him, basically to be more or less he's renting a wife, and uh, and it has Gerard Depardieu he shows up in there in there later, and that was just a really really interesting movie. Some of it was done to where it was kind of like. There would be a scene, and then the lighting would change. So you wonder whether, completely dramatically, you know, like it's sort of a dark, darkly lit scene, and then suddenly everything gets brighter. So it makes, makes me wonder whether that was a dream, whether it's really imagining it that way. And there's a couple scenes that turn out to be somebody's imagined thing, but a lot of the scenes that seemed like they're imagined are actually really happening, but in sort of a uh, different perspective, I, I suppose. But... Uh, yeah, that movie just had me really fascinated. Um, and there's some interesting interesting surprises. And so if you can handle reading subtitles, I really recommend it. Um, something about how much do you love me or something like that. And it talks about, it deals with about, kind of in a sense, what love is. Excuse me. Anyway, I've been watching a bunch of them. What can I say? I, well, last week I watched this movie called Easy A. What can I say? I'm a sucker for these high school drama sort of thing. But Easy A was really, really good. And it's about this girl that sort of, um, by accident, sort of, she makes up this... Her friend wanted to hang out with her on the weekend, but her, par the, her friend's parents are just weird-ass hippie types. And um, she doesn't like... She doesn't want to spend the whole weekend over there. So she makes up an excuse and says she has a date a date from with some college guy or a guy at the community college or something like that. And so the friend just starts assuming that, you know, they did the deed and she lost her virginity. Well, she tells somebody and one thing leads to another. And so this girl 
ends up getting this major reputation as being a slut on campus. And uh, she's, they're reading in her, in her English class, they're reading The Scarlet A. Um, so she decides to go to roll with it and just dress the part, starts dressing like a, a, you know, a promiscuous young girl on campus and things get really, really out of hand. And, uh, but a very entertaining movie. Very entertaining, if you like those high school things, you know, and of course, of course there's some like, you know, the nice guy who sees through it all, and you know, so, a um, little bit of politics, the only thing I'm going to talk about is like, so far, uh, there doesn't seem to be any good contender, so I say Sarah Palin all the way, Mitt Romney is getting way too much flack, but he's getting a lot of flack about his health care thing, and apparently the Massachusetts, and he's, He's since then sort of like said, oh, yeah, well, you know, that didn't, that wasn't so great. He can't really defend it. But it's just Obamacare is just a terrible, terrible compromise of what it started out as what it should have been. In fact, somebody wrote that Richard Nixon's health care proposal was a lot more uh, uh, a major dramatic change than, uh, than Obamacare. And part of the Obamacare thing that evolved into is that they're just making it sort of mandatory health insurance, is that people are going to be required to have health insurance, and uh, which I'm against, you know, to say it's sort of like, you know, like being told to register your car. Well, basically, you're registering yourself, or, you know, or, or getting health, car insurance is mandatory in California, and I think in most states. So they're treating it like that, which I'm against. You know, you know, I want like healthcare like they have in France and the UK and Canada. You know, which, by the way, if Clevo was in Canadian, all that would have been taken care of. There's a great episode on uh, on Thirty Rock where uh, oh, I forget the boss, who's this really hardcore. Right, it's a satire. He's like this hardcore Republican. And so they end up stranded in, in Canada with his pregnant wife. You know, he and his wife end up stranded in Canada, and she ends up delivering the baby there. And at the end of it, he's like, okay, we're ready to go. Where's the bill? He said, there's no bill. He gets irate. I'm not leaving here until I pay my bill. <laughs> What's his name? Jack? Jack Dunahy or something like that? His name's Jack. I just remembered now. So, uh... Yeah, so there's no real contenders there. Um, and I'm just going to talk a little bit about that Wiener guy. I can't remember his first name, but, you know, Wiener. Wiener's Wiener. Look, man, if some older guy... <laughs> it's going to make me sound awful. Oh, yeah, I do it all the time. If some older guy wants to uh, uh, send out pictures of himself, you know... Um, in that, in that regard, I don't think I don't think it should be unless they're underage. I don't think it should be criminal. I don't think there should be any reason for him to resign over something like that, except that he lied about it. That I have a problem with, and now I think he needs to resign. I think I think it's over, you know, for him. You know, if you're gonna do something like that, own it, you know. Say, hell yeah, I got these girls asking me for this. <laughs> Not that they did, really. Okay, I guess that'd be another lie. I mean, I'm not so shocked. He's a Democrat. The thing is, the thing is, if you're a liberal, you're not embarrassed about that stuff as much, and you don't repress it, you know. But if you're a right-wing type, you know, with the whole family value stuff, and look, look how it was... That reminds me of Christopher Lee's The Bloody Judge again, like this whole like puritanical thing and all this repression. It comes out in an even uglier way, you know, um, where everything's driven into secret, you know, and, you know, and uh, when everything's held back, it comes out in this really wrong way, you know, um, kind of a sickness. You know, how like in puritanical times there were people doing things secretly that, that were 
probably much worse than if they just lived in an environment that was uh, more easygoing about things that were sexual, you know, instead of turning into, you know, like, what do they call it, sublimation? I think that's one of the words in psychology. Um, the notion, okay, so like uh, d during that time period in the Catholic Church, there was something, you know, known as self-flagellation, you know, a person would feel guilty, so they'd take a whip, remove their shirt, and just beat themselves. And there was a lot of that going on. So what's going on is his sexual drive, his thoughts of lust, is, is uh, being, there's transference and there's sublimation, but it's being changed. Instead of using that outlet, you know, about having to go out and have sex with a woman, um, he's repressing it, and it comes out where he's beating himself with a whip which is unnatural, and which is regarded as perfectly healthy. In fact, good, a good thing. So I'm just saying, you know, you find out stuff about Newt Gingrich. You know, there, this guy was going on and on and on about, oh, uh, John Edwards. You know, John Edwards lied too, you know. That was awful. He's an awful person. And to think, I actually like John Edwards. Boy, do I feel like an idiot. At one point, I did. And, um, uh, but they were going on about, oh, John Edwards cheating on his wife while she had cancer. Newt Gingrich did the same thing. I mean, I don't think his wife was, was dying. It wasn't as severe. But the wife had cancer, and he left her. If that's how I remember, if I'm wrong about that, correct me. But I didn't hear the AM talk radio talk show host, Chip Franklin, mention that. All right. Gone on long enough. The beeper, I don't know if you heard the beeper, but I'm, I'm doing laundry right now. <laughs> The draw and the washing machine has stopped a long time ago. All right, everybody, have a great week. Thanks for watching. Fez night, now even fezzier. Cheers. Doggone it, I completely forgot something. I needed to announce the uh, the winner of uh, Win Pops' Dildo Contest. <laughs> and look, I want to apologize to people that thought I was being... Uh, out of character and being too rude or too edgy and uh, let me know and I, I may not I may not do this stuff anymore but there's part of me that wants to <laughs> so if any of you found that really offensive let me know all right except for pops I know you I know you were offended <laughs> which is what I is what I meant to do <clears throat> so the only person that responded with a video, so it's easy. Uh, the rules were uh, post a res uh, response video, and the one who gets the most votes wins. Um, is uh, The only person that posted a response video was Toothless Overalls. Who has a catchphrase, he ends each comment with tooth. You know, you've been around, you've been around for ages, Toothless Overalls. I remember meeting you or running into you, um, and we never really engaged interacted too much, but you, I believe you were part of the Network of Evil. I know that you were friends with uh, uh, the the then um, Old Frank channel, which was um, Muck and Stan. So congratulations on being the winner of, uh, of Pops' Dildo. And um, just send me a PM and uh, with your address, and, and I'll get on the ball and package it up and mail it out to you. Hopefully you don't live in the South, because uh, some parts of the South, you can get in big trouble <laughs> owning something like that. At least that's the way I understand it. Talk about repression, yeah. All right. I just had to add this little part. Okay, bye. The Citizen Calling. Have a great week.